in many many lights even before Rastafari there were repatriation talk because you're looking on from 1915 the British uh, West Indian Regiment of, of black soldiers seeing the army representative went to war world war and they represent England different wars and battle front when they came back, the situation and condition was so terrible. They could not be employed, they could not find housing, they could not find no comfort in early Jamaica. <clears throat> that time, hmm? I think it's earlier than the 19th century, earlier, for you looking at World War I, so it could be earlier than that time, see? No. They cried out for repatriation to Africa the motherland, where they could be treated more equally as a human being. The British colonial government, many letters were sent to them, and they refused to, re to repatriate the same soldiers who fought for the British, British crown, fought so valiantly with their own heart and soul. And when they take off the army uniform and become civilians, they could not fit in the society. So you're looking on a cry from the earliest time of World War, wherein West Indian soldiers, Jamaican soldiers went into war for the British government and crown. Now Rastafari in this modern time, it's like a bloodline, a DNA, just transfer due to ages and time, and people say, it comes naturally, because the colonial masters in that time were not nice you know, you remember say we have chattel slavery, you, you, you have indentured workers, yeah, the Indians came here first, Indians couldn't work, you know, the Africans came here first, and then Jamaica is a land of sugarcane plantation and a high level of slavery. So you have these people working for the plantation, and for the plantation what? They live in squalor. And when you go back into the Bible, each man should be treated equally, and it's equal rights and justice. So how does that match? When so many people are enslaved and they come to know better that each man is equal in the eyes of God, that is being taught to them. So the old cry was, send us back to Africa. Either you deport us, for one, put, our, put us on a plane, or just send us back wherein we could live. It wasn't done. Rastafari took up the banner and said, Repatriation and reparations, you know. Not one now, you know. Two. They go hand in hand. You have to compensate us for all this time. You did not compensate our ancestors because we came from them. But it's full time to compensate us because we grew up in this modern world knowing. Because we're not grown to slave plantation in the sense of cane fields and banana fields, you know. We grew up at a different level. But when we look at the society, we still demand the justice and the equality and the equal rights of everybody. The demand for repatriation and reparation is still on the books. But these governments don't figure that they should honor it. And these puppet governments in countries don't figure that they should put it on their agenda. Although you can see in different, different circles there is an appeal. So what we learn when the paper, when the paper was sent into England, this present queen said no. She was nobody, nothing, because in her ancestors' time, slavery was legal. And in her time, it is not legal, so she has nothing to pay. But when you look on Britain and what they have acquired from this, this, the slave fortune, yeah, they should pay. His Majesty would have said, learn the African language. Don't go there without knowing a language to speak. Send a pioneer group to Africa, especially to Sashimani, so they can have people to go. So Marcus Garvey had found Liberia right now, and eventually it didn't work out for him. Because by the time he identified down there, uh, 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 he lost the property. And people lost money. So you're looking at the UNIA from that early time. There was a repatriation bill, you know, that was tabled, you know, and the British government did not honor it. 
after Marcus Garvey died. So you find that the repatriation is not new. But you'll have to have people, the intellectual side of Rastafari, or, 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 or the, 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 the Pan-African people then, who are educated and who can write papers and demand, who are lawyers and governors. It is not the peasant people, you know, who don't have the ability of languages and forum because they do not have the capacity to speak in those terms. So you find that intellectual ones now, they are the ones who should take repatriation and gender on the forefront. But what governments do is to pacify the people, keep them into a hand-to-mouth situation, keep them into a daily survival. So when you talk about repatriation, you say, what, go where? African lions and tigers and jungles, are they not going there? Give thanks. There are many things about Marcus Garvey that we rest of our eye look on. You have the positive and negative side of Marcus Garvey. But I listen to say, I say, Marcus Garvey is not here to answer using that analogy. See? So we're looking at Marcus Garvey who says that he's a provisional governor of Africa. When I last last year I said, yeah, hey, Marcus Garvey, that's what we're learning you know, from Asians and from books. All the ones in Jamaica can hold in Ethiopia. Take them. When you look on the writings of Marcus Garvey in the black man who said, Ilas Selassie is a coward and he's not from royal blood. We, 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 we take a back step and say, Marcus, what is really wrong with you? Have you no vision of who Ilas Selassie is? When we look on Leonard Percival Howell, who wants to go on Marcus Garvey's platform to show a picture that he was shown for one shilling of Ilas Selassie? Marcus Garvey said, no, Howell. They, they know both of them. Both of them know each other from Harlem. And when Marcus Garvey was in Jamaica, Howell was also in Jamaica, Leonard Howell wanted to go on Garvey's platform to announce I listen last year. Marcus Garvey said, no, Howell, no. So Howell went on his way, reorganized himself with, with Hebert and Dunkley and Hines and hit the road. And from that time, the button changed into a revolutionary side of the movement. We respect Marcus Garvey for his Pan-African side, but we don't see Marcus Garvey in the sight of the Garvey movement then. We give you any you and I a credit for what you have done you know, globally. But it's not a mobilizing force of Rastafari. Right? When you look know, Marcus Garvey said look to Africa for a back thing should be crowned. It was not Marcus Garvey words. It was Reverend Webb words who Marcus Garvey learned and read about and announced it. We learned that too. See? When we read that Marcus Garvey write a letter to Ilis Lassie and Ilis Lassie or the, the, the advisor or the secretary send back the letter to Marcus Garvey unopened. We know something is wrong there. So we do respect Marcus Garvey as a great Pan-Africanist, a great motivator, a great mobilizer. But we don't see Marcus Garvey, I personally, as a rallying point for Rastafari today. No. We don't see that. But we do respect Marcus God for what he has contributed to the black liberation struggle and to African at large, globally. Give thanks. Thank you so much for watching I Never Knew TV. Please subscribe, comment, like, share.